Hey guys, it's Laura with Quilted Chicken, and today we're going to have um, a walkthrough semi tutorial on how we did um, our Laura Heine Collage B. Uh, now, there are classes that you can take with Laura Heine. She has um, certified teachers that will travel the country and teach classes um, on her technique. Uh, I am not one of those people. This is not one of those videos. Um, we started our bee collage um, um, about probably about a year back uh, when we had several people in the shop that said I love those I've seen them I don't think I can do that I've never tried it before so this was our first attempt the process that we went through the first time that we read the directions and um, the cutting and the ironing and the tracing and reversing I hope that you like it we will do another video um, everything is always better the second time around um, and that's um, that's another reason why she has people that teach the classes for the. It's not an exact science, but there is an art to her collages. So I hope that you enjoy um, and if you have any questions or comments, let me know um, down below. We will have links to our patterns and the kits that we have put together for our bees. Thanks a lot. Enjoy. Um, we're working on our honeybee by Laura Heine. Uh, this is the large honeybee. This was the 41 by 45 by 36. And we have before us all of our fabrics that we have cut. Uh, and if you've gotten the kit that we have for this, you have all of these exact same fabrics. We've followed the directions on the back of the pattern and have chosen um, the, all of the pieces are six by 11. Step one that we're going to do, we have cut several strips of, uh, it calls for the Steamacine 2, the light fusible. So we're going to iron everything on and then we'll check back. The sample piece that I have cut for us was just the end of the fold of the fabric. So it's a little bit wider than the six inches that uh, trim down all of the excess. Step may or may not be necessary. I just went laying out, especially on the background pieces. Uh, in fact, we may just do it on the background. Okay, so we're going to start out with our wings. I've laid a piece um, underneath our B so that I can see this uh, best and so that the white on the underside gives me something a little bit better to trace. Uh, and how we're going to trace this out it says to peel off part of the way. We're not gonna peel it off completely because we do want to keep the, to keep it uh, stabilized and to help us trace. When, since we've peeled the paperback part of the way, we can lay this on top of our wing. We can trace our wing 
and then we can iron it back and have our piece cut out. And I really love this fabric. I wish that I had cut a longer piece, but I did not. So we may see about using that as the tips. Yeah, it only said three to four, six by 11, which is what we have. So it's a little bit difficult to see, but uh, with that with the pen, I was able to trace. So then we can cut out on our line. I may have to see. We're gonna we're gonna cut this out. So if you can see, our, the, our under wing is going to come down. We want to uh, overlap. So when we draw for this piece, this bottom wing, or the, the well, the, this, the wing that's gonna be on top, is actually going to sit underneath this wing here. So I've come in about a quarter of an inch from my line, and then it, when we cut that out, that's gonna overlap for, uh, so that every, that's what the directions say. So that's what we're doing. So I think I'm happy with that. We might, I think there's a section that has you put some, there's some special like little cutout kind of stuff, uh, but this, this looks good for our base. So then I think it has us move on to the body. Okay, so for the B, for the B body, these are the fabrics that we've got. I can't, I'll have to look. I don't remember if I have on the picture, it actually has um, a large flower, it looks like, for the eye. I'll have to look through ours and see what we've got for that. These are, these are the motifs that we picked um, as a selection for the tops of the bees, I might look, we might be able to use one of these fabrics as something for the eye. We'll get the blacks laid out and then we'll look to see what we like. Okay, so a little change of plans. Uh, we are still doing the peel it off. Uh, I did not follow the exact directions and I have Wonder Under and not the Steam -a Seam. So I'm thinking that on the Steam -a Seam light, uh, you're able to draw a little bit better on the paper. Uh, when I peel this off and draw on this side, it's, uh, it's very difficult to see. And then also when I iron it back, it's difficult to see. So what I did was, and you probably saw, 
I peeled it back. Uh, I drew on the side that's more like the paper. Uh, and then this piece will actually, what we'll do, we'll get everything cut and laid out. I'm gonna keep it upside down and then when we go to fuse it, uh, we will flip our B uh, over like this and we will stitch, we will uh, press him on this back side just because it's easier to draw on the paper part of this and the only way to get that is to peel it off, draw on the top and then it'll be our reverse. I could flip this like this. This does not exactly line up uh, so we're going to keep our B on the same side and we'll iron it from the back. Now our wings we will reverse when we get to that point. We'll flip everything over um, and we'll talk about that. But for right now we're just going to keep uh, laying out our B, laying out our, our colors for our for the body of our B. And then we'll go back and look at some of the little extras. We'll add some of the fun stuff at the end. So far, I am pleasantly surprised <clears throat> with how things are going and how uh, I'm thinking in my brain it's going to turn out. Uh, the next step that I'm going to take um, is to, I've got all of the pieces cut for the body and for the wings, for the head, the antenna, the legs. Uh, what I'm going to do next is uh, carefully pick everything up, stack it flip our pattern ease over so that I can peel off the pieces and lay them uh, right side up uh, and then we can get our background going. What I have done and so on the back of the pattern it calls for I think it says 10 to 11 6 by 11 pieces, six inch by 11 inch pieces. Well, our, our background is 36 by 45, so if you do the math, that would be 24 pieces. Um, maybe, to, maybe missing three or four pieces because of our B. So what I did, I went back through and cut some more background pieces, uh, and we will include those in the kit, um, just because I was afraid that we weren't gonna have enough stuff laying out. Something else I have done, uh, the background pieces that I do have, I have cut some of the sections so that when they overlap we'll get kind of that fun collage look. Some of the pieces I have kept solid. Uh, this will probably be a whole piece. We'll see once we get to laying it out. Um, again, this is not super interesting. It's a fun print, but it'll be nice to have some things kind of overlap and overlay the top of it. On some of our pieces that have more of a design, um, like our hexagons, I have gone ahead and cut out this piece. I will probably cut out several of these or make it to where it could then be overlapped on top of something else. The pieces that obviously cannot be used as a background, well, and they could be. In my opinion, these are a little bit dark I am going to go ahead and cut out several of these flowers to use as some of our, I forget what they call it in the, in the pattern, but some of the decorative pieces that we're going to overlay on top of this just to, to layer it and collage it up a lot. Um, you can see I've, I've cut out some of this guy here. We'll cut out quite a, well there's several pieces of this to cut. Uh, this Harmony fabric from Riley Blake, look at that fun, fun section. It almost looks like a sticker, and then we'll be able to lay that somewhere on our background. There's some smaller pieces that we could put on the B. So we're going to go through all of our pieces. Um, I'm also going to use the yellows that we only have them used on the, the cross part of the B body. Um, there's a, enough of a chunk of these that these could also be used in the background. They're light enough that we can use those on our background pieces. 
I've saved, just like the direction said, all of my scraps. These, this, that was left over from our wings. Um, I cut a few of those flowers that we will definitely use for some of our decoration. So that'll be the next step. Oh, I have to take a minute. Look at this. This is some of the Tilda fabric. Um, look how cute that is. The tops of this, I'm not sure if I want to cut that apart to go with, um, use some of the flowers on our bee because this is a really pretty yellow that would be fun on our bee or to use it as like in a corner section or something. We'll see. So to recap, we're going to gather up all of our cut pieces. We're going to flip our patternies over and we're going to we're going to peel off the backing of what we have cut already so that we can start laying our background up underneath and trimming that and getting our background laid out. So I'm mostly happy with the background. There are a couple, um, this fabric is really dark next up next to the wings. Uh, so I think that I'm going to peel this off and I have three other fabrics. Two of these come from the late October line that just came out from Moda, but I think that these would be a little bit better. And this actually looks a lot like what's on the pattern, the front of the pattern. Um, these I think are a little bit lighter scale, maybe um, these two, this would be a great for um, off down the side here. Um, so I am going to work on getting uh, these taken up that I don't love. And then we're gonna cut, we, we've, I've got some stuff, we're gonna look at it. I may try to emphasize a little bit more of the, uh, the wings here just because they don't show. If you can, if you notice some of the colors from our B, um, I used as the background here. Uh, this, I don't think I have this anywhere so far on the, in the collage part, but I, this was a really great cut apart floral. So we did use that. If you notice, there is a section here that does not have anything on it. I was not able to get, um, as many large pieces as I would like to overlap where I wanted them to. So we're gonna use, we're gonna take some of our cutouts that we've got. Uh, we're gonna kind of collage those into place um, to fix this area. We've got a little area up over here. Um, so we're just gonna have, today's gonna be the fun part of getting everything kind of mishmashed together and blended more. Uh, several of the fabrics have got a pretty harsh corner 
All right, so let's have fun and get cutting. So here we are with the cutouts that we have done so far. I'd have to look at the clock. It's been a few hours. So let's take a look and see where we everything fits. So on uh, the pattern cover, um, it shows that they did something around the wings to sort of separate that out. Uh, I think that it had some sort of text or font or something. I took and literally just cut into random strips one of the darker fabrics that we used on the bee's legs. So we may lay these out on the wings uh, just to see how those look. We may or may not wind up using those. I should have peel the backings off of all of this stuff. I don't think that I did that though. If you have a helper, if you've got a friend, if you, uh, this is, if this is something that you could just get done in the evenings, you wouldn't even have to sit all in one session to cut everything out. Uh, and I'm really happy with a lot of the florals that we picked that there's enough to make it look like, almost like a sticker. I even took one of the, I was cutting some bee, I was cutting the bees out of the, the this fabric, um, and I liked the, the little leftover that was just from the, what we took off the top and the bottom, so we're going to use this somewhere as well. And even this one here, this is just the section of a corner of a leaf. Um, here's the full fabric. Oh, uh, it's a pretty big print, so I do have one or two of the big, of the large flowers, but even just this little leaf, just that fun, we'll find somewhere for it. And I love this. Uh, this is uh, from the Moda's Frankie line. Uh, I like the way it kind of looks around and but oh, oh, look at that with the heart. And then we've got some of these dots. This was one a fabric we actually used on part of the leg that didn't take. Um, I cut some out together and some out separately, so that's going to be fun. In retrospect, I might have, it was, it was easy to cut out the pieces with the, uh, with the iron-on paper on the back, but now having to sit and pull paper off of all of these pieces as opposed to maybe 15 large pieces, uh, so that's up to you. I had several pieces that we saved, um, like even the cut edge, that something could be put up against the top, have it kind of overlap and come down into the collage. So if we saved those, that'll, that's gonna be fun. Okay, so we have all of our pieces uh, pulled, I have all of our, the paper backing off of our applique collage pieces. Uh, we're in the floor, I'm gonna iron in the floor.
if you have um, a tabletop that's large enough, if you have an extra big ironing board top, uh, that's the way to go. I do not. I am going to use, uh, we have a silicone pressing sheet uh, that you can use to iron and press uh, and the sticky will not stick to your iron uh, and then of course it does not, it also does not stick to the silicone. Um, so we're going to get started, we're going to get started ironing. Um, I haven't talked about the ironing, uh, depending on uh, the material that you use, if you use the Wonder Under or this, uh, the Steam Seam Light. Uh, also be aware of your iron. Um, you'll want to make sure that you press it long enough for everything to fuse properly uh, without over pressing um, to, if you have, if, to worry about damaging any of the, either your iron or the paper or anything like that. We have uh, the directions have you fused directly to pattern ease uh, that we drew our pattern on. Uh, I had a, a white piece of fabric. Uh, that fabric was just for me to be able to see my outline on the back of the on the back of the on the paper. So a benefit also of uh, using your pressing sheet once all of your papers, once all of your pieces are down how you want, you we, we can lay our sheet gently on top of that and press. We don't have to worry about moving the iron back and forth and moving any of our pieces. Alrighty, so final step. I um, took my phone, took the camera, uh, and took a picture um, just to look at it overall to see how, if there was anything that jumped out as not really looking great. So there's just a couple things that I'm going to move. The heart, uh, because I've got these great big um, flowers here, looked a little bit more like a blob, so we're going to scoot these in. To frame the heart out a little bit better. And we're going to put a few more uh, little crossings in the wings. So I'm liking this more. I still am going to go back and get, um, I'm going to cut some more pieces to just kind of put a little, oh, I've got a few here, just to kind of frame these wings out. Just looking at them with the human eye, uh, I'm thinking they look a little bit too much, but on the picture. And then of course from, from further back they look. They look pretty, I'm pretty, I'm pretty pleased. I did have fun with the, adding these little extra pieces here. I wish that I'd had a little bit more of this fabric. I think, uh, yeah, I used a good chunk of it in the background though, but this, it was fun to take little sections of the other wing and overlay them with what, what's already there. I'm hoping I can get away with all of these straight pieces. I don't want, I could go and get and cut some rounds for the corner if I have to. I'm, I really want to now go and get all the other patterns that I've got from her and do some more. I think the last step in the instructions was you have to stop at some point. And it's hard because it is, it's fun. It's also very easy to get sucked in. 
I'm going to call this good. We I've prepped the I've tipped the iron a couple times to get that thing preheated. Okay, that's it. I'm gonna call it. I'm gonna call it good. So we're gonna take our pressing sheet and put it on top of this section here because see, there's about five thousand. Well, that's a lot. There's not five thousand. There's a ton of pieces, and even just moving this on top, I've, we hit one of those spots. And especially on the wings, uh, we're gonna want for everything to stay in a nice. It stay exactly where it is. So this, they call for on the back of the pattern, uh, she recommends a something goddess pressing sheet. I'd have to look which one, which one I have. I don't think it's the goddess one, but it's it's the same concept of a, of a silicone pressing sheet. So we're just gonna take our time, move around, get all of this ironed down. Uh, press it really good and then we'll check back. Hooray!